we work on how animals can regenerate and uh, we use the axolotl as a premier model for regeneration. And we use frogs uh, because they can regenerate as tadpoles, but not after metamorphosis. So this allows us to understand the molecular genetics of how regeneration works, and then what might go wrong in situations where regeneration doesn't happen. Single cell transcriptomics has been extremely important for us. In almost any experiment where we're following a time course of regeneration, we use single cell transcriptomics, and in particular, we've been using the 10X uh, technologies because the tissues that we follow are very complicated and have many different cell types. And so we need to be able to sort out the transcriptomes of the different cell types during regeneration. And the only way to do this really is with single cell transcriptomics. And now many of our experiments now integrate the multiome to be able to get the transcriptome as well as uh, ataxic data. And uh, we've also uh, implemented spatial transcriptomics using the Visium um, platform. Before 10X, I guess, existed, the throughput was kind of in the hundreds of cells. And, and now with the ability of people routinely make experiments where they sequence hundreds of thousands of cells. And so this gives us much better resolution into the cell types that we can identify in a complex um, tissue. Also the variety of epigenetic profiling that's becoming available in single cell mode is gonna be extremely important for working out the gene regulatory uh, networks operating inside cells as they undergo cell decision-making processes. We're performing our first kind of large-scale single-cell sequencing experiments in collaboration with Barbara Troitline's lab, and they were a very early adapter of the 10X uh, transcriptomics technologies. And we uh, looked at axolotl regeneration and a time course of regeneration in the blastema, and it was really remarkable to do trajectory analysis uh, to be able to see a trajectory that was consistent with the blastema cell being multipotent. It was very beautiful. To pinpoint where certain cells that we were sequencing were inside the brain. And by looking at sections um, of the brain that were then sequenced through the visium, we could see the locations of these cells and that the brain had these different um, cell types uh, within it. And this allowed us to identify which part of the axolotl brain is homologous to which part of mammalian brains. I think this technology is extremely important for uh, regeneration. As I, I mentioned, Regeneration is always done from adult tissues, which contains many, many different cell types. And we have to follow a time course of regeneration. So the spatial allows us to gain the resolution of what different cell types of different tissues are uh, expressing with where they are as the tissue is changing over time during regeneration. For Visium, since you're able to sequence in an unbiased way, the RNAs that are captured in, in specific locations in the tissues, it really allows us to identify new biology. So new, as I mentioned, receptor and ligand interactions that are occurring in a very specific part of the injured tissue, how that's changing um, over time. Yeah, this unbiased approach really opens up the possibility of identifying new spatially localized transcripts that might be very important for regeneration. These days, as, as I mentioned, almost all of our experiments involve doing single cell uh, sequencing. It's pretty amazing how it's transformed our field.